I had a thought the other day of how can I help people grow their solar setup in their RV, uh, their solar, the charge controller, the inverter, uh, without having to break the bank or without having to do it all at once. So how do you strategize buying some of these pieces of equipment for today and still being able to strategize for the future? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today and a little project on how to get started in that. How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. That little project that I had mentioned earlier talking about building is building your own solar suitcase that is not just a solar suitcase, but it can grow into something more. Or it can be an addition onto your RV. Because let's be honest, when you're building a solar setup on an RV, it can get really expensive between the, the batteries, the inverter, the, the actual solar that goes on the RV. These things add up. So what are those things that we can do to strategize it so that we're not rebuying different components to upgrade, but we can plan for the future so we can use these, these larger components as we grow the system. Here's the interesting thing about our little solar project is we're using these Renogy panels that are fully intended to be able to mount to the RV. So we can have a portable system now and we can mount it on the RV later. It gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility for planning for the future. We actually have a handful of pieces of equipment that we think of in this way to be able to, to plan. So first off, the components that we want to look at are the, the larger components. So uh, when we look at the inverter or a charge controller, what are those things that are going to allow us the flexibility in the future? You might have lead acid batteries now and you hope to go to maybe AGM or lithium in the future and being able to have equipment that can handle going from those different stages is going to be the, the best option. You're gonna waste less money. So like for instance, our Victron inverter has the ability to, we, we can put in any battery type and charging parameters we want into there. So if we started with lead acid and we bought that inverter to be able to just get our feet wet and get started in that. Yes, it's an expensive inverter, but it has so many capabilities. It's very flexible so that as the system grows from lead acid to lithium, we don't have to change the inverter. We can stick with that original inverter and be able to just upgrade the batteries. So uh, we can do it incrementally rather than all at once. I need the batteries, the inverter, the solar. So looking at these larger components, if we need to buy different fuses as we go along and the system grows, that's that's a smaller item and it's, it's not that big of a deal. But if we can look at our charge controller uh, like we're going to do today on this solar briefcase that we're basically gonna build on this portable unit, we can plan for the future so that you can upgrade this and make it bigger in the future. But for now, you're still able to get the benefit out of it by starting small, taking it in small chunks. So this concept would have saved us money in the long run. Uh, we could have saved money on an inverter. We bought multiple different converters for the RV for different battery types. So uh, if we would have just started with this idea in the long run, we would have spent a little bit more money up front to get the inverter we wanted, but it would have saved money in the long run because we didn't have to buy multiple things throughout this. So the inverter is kind of the, the first example and one of the, the more expensive pieces to the puzzle to, to build around. Uh, but the charge controller, the charge controller that we're going to use in this little portable setup is an MPPT charge controller, which is great to be able to grow into in the future. And you can add things onto it. So if you don't want to start with Bluetooth in the beginning, it's just a, a small little adapter so that you can add it to it. And then you have a system with Bluetooth that you're growing more panels. It gives you the ability to expand your setup. So let's dive into the ingredients of this recipe for our little portable setup. So we're gonna start off with two solar panels. These are the compact design from Renogy. Uh, we're gonna have a cable kit to be able to connect those panels to the charge controller and there's going to be a small inline fuse. So then from the charge controller, which is the uh, 30 amp MPPT, you can either do a smaller one at 20, you can upgrade that to a 41, uh, whatever you would like your system to grow into, it would be a good idea to, to select the amperage out of the one that you would like. So today we're just gonna be using the 30 amp Rover MPPT. From there, we have a fuse that will work good in the future, but for now, this will connect the charge controller to the batteries, and then we have our tray cable to be able to connect to the batteries. So 
All this comes around $425, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, Renergy gave me a code so that I can save you guys 10% on things that aren't on sale on the Renergy website. So you just have to use the code all about RVs. You can use the links down below to get to it, but uh, it's not a bad price for being able to have 200 watts of solar in a little compact unit like this. Now it's something that, the reason why we're building it this way is because you'll never take one of those briefcase portable units and mount it on your RV. But this one we can use as a little briefcase, we could use it as a starter kit, and if one day we wanted to mount it on the RV when we bought more panels, you just disassemble this little portable unit and then you can mount it straight to the RV. These are great because they're meant to mount on your RV. So whether you just wanna start with two and figure out the configuration later, depending on how many panels you go with, this gives you the flexibility and buys you some time to figure out exactly what you wanna do on the RV. So in addition to all this solar equipment, to make this a, a foldable unit, I went and picked up a couple of small hinges. So three inch hinges, I was able to mount right on here, just a little bit of hardware, and they just bolt together. I put the glass so that it faces each other, which is great for protecting the, the front of those panels. Uh, but when it opens up, I had to put three legs at the bottom of this thing. If you mount it the other way where the glass is facing out, the glass would be exposed, but at the same time, it'll, it'll help keep it open a little bit better. So. Either way you wanna go is fine. So I drilled into the side of the frame and mounted these hinges, and then I drilled on the sides also to drop down those legs. I had some uh, flat stock aluminum that I just bolted to the side. I actually put some magnets at the end of it so they would just kinda snap into place and not be flopping everywhere when I'm pulling this thing out or putting it back away. Um, it's just easy to have those legs just kinda snap into place. And then I used some of that uh, Velcro that we talked about a couple of videos ago. I just put that on the top, extra little piece of metal, and be able to just click it right into place so that it won't open as you're trying to carry it around. Another thing I did to protect the glass is I put these little bumpers in the corner, kind of like what you'd use on cabinet doors. Uh, it just keeps it from bumping together and harming that glass or the, the solar panels. So now we just need to connect this solar setup to the batteries in the RV. Oftentimes the portable units will have the charge controller on the, the panels themselves, but I think that in this situation it'd be best just to have this mounted inside the RV so that you're not having to, to move it around all the time. You could make it more portable and mount it to the panels, but um, I like keeping it inside the RV. So we're gonna mount that in the RV and then we take our wires, connect it to the fuse, and then from the fuse, we're going to connect it to the bus bars that go to the batteries in the RV. That way it's going through our battery monitor and all that's going to be calculated in there. So I'm just gonna leave all this mounted inside of the RV. So at this point, once we have our charge controller, the positive and the negative connected to the batteries, it powers the unit on. Usually you wanna connect your charge controller to the batteries first and then to the solar panels. So once we have that up and going, now we just need to connect our wires that are gonna to go to the solar panels to the charge controller. And then here we just have a really simple inline fuse, so we don't even have anything that we need to mount. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You could put a port on the side of your RV to be able to plug these panels into, it'd be nice and clean. That would be a, a long-term solution. Or if this is just a temporary thing, you could leave those, those wires coiled up inside and be able to have them Velcroed. So when you wanna use this portable setup, you just unravel the, those wires, be able to pull them out and plug them into the solar panels. At this point, you're off and running and if it's sunny outside, you're gonna be producing power for your battery. So, Really handy way just to be able to add a little bit of solar. Maybe you don't have any more room on the roof. Maybe you don't want to mount any more panels on the RV. Maybe you want some flexibility and having some, some panels that you can tilt on the ground. There's lots of different reasons why you would possibly build a little unit like this. So gives you a lot of flexibility and room to grow in the future. Just as a quick side note, it's around 5.15 and I just set up these two panels and I tilted them towards the sun. The batteries needed to be filled pretty quick and we have four flat on the roof. These were actually outperforming the four flat on the roof. Being able to have these on the ground and tilted, it's amazing what they can produce. It's great to be able to see that power coming in. So the reason why I like this charge controller and it can grow with you is you can set up the battery type so you can have it in lead acid just like we were talking about with other equipment. Um, you can go to AGM, you can go to lithium, and you can stay within this charge controller. If you change your battery type, you don't have to change your charge controller if you get the right kind. And this is an MPPT charge controller so you can see that the voltage that's coming in is really high and it's able to use all that available 
energy to be able to take the, the voltage and the amperage and deliver to the batteries exactly what's needed with minimal waste compared to different types of charge controllers. So this is definitely one that you can get and you can have grow with your system, change the battery types, add panels to this type of charge controller and uh, have the flexibility to be able to do that. Now, the reason why we went with these solar panels is a, a couple of things. One, uh, they're compact, they're easy for this little portable setup. Yes, you can get larger ones to be able to mount on the RV, but these are gonna be easy to find, easy to get, and easy to match. So as you grow your system, if you wanna add more panels to this charge controller, you can match those panels and not have to worry about dismatched panels and not being as efficient. So we can add to the system, add to the setup, and they're a really compact panel. So depending on how much room you have on the roof of your RV, you're not worried about a big panel that you're looking for a large surface area to, to mount. You can mount these in different configurations up there because they're, they're small, they're compact, and you can kind of work around some of the equipment or the roof size that you have on the RV. So that's why I went with this and kind of designed the system that way. So that's the idea and concept that I wanted to share with you guys is see that you can do this in increments. You don't have to have one huge expense for your entire setup. Uh, you can do it in pieces and you can grow slowly. You can start with this portable solar compact system that we built here today, or you can start with your inverter and be able to use it with the system that you currently have. Uh, you can tackle each of those projects and have them work together as long as you plan for the future and know that these things will work with what you hope to change to in the future. So it should save you money so you don't have to rebuy equipment and help you get started in it. Sometimes that upfront expense can be daunting and being able to take it in sections and small pieces really helps out. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.